Welcome back to The Real Country File. Coming up this week, Stephen visits the Scorton Steam Rally and looks a little bit at some of the diversification that's going on there. Angela is at the Down to Earth event. I go and look at some tractors that are much older than me, doing a very long journey. Right, so I'm with David Harrison and he's doing something very exciting tomorrow. Well, in fact, for the whole week. So where are we off? We are going from Liverpool to Whitby via drovers roads and back lanes and private estates and then returning using a six day pleasure trip really. It's good fun, it's all for charity, but we pay for all our own expenses and we've done it now for 26 years and it is the world's longest annual vintage charity tractor run. Bit of a mouthful, but no cabs allowed, all old tractors, great fun, good accommodation, good crack, and so far we've raised almost £87,000 for charity, which is good because we don't beg. People want to give and donate, that's great. If they don't, so be it. Um, that's about it, really. So the, they're all, you know, quite a lot of Fords on it this year, isn't there? But you've, you're taking a Massey. I'm taking a Massey. We've got an International, a Nuffield, a lot fact, of the Nuffields here, we'll, we'll have a look at the Nuffield, it's quite shiny, isn't it? <laughs> what, what year will that be? That is a, I think it's about a 1970. It's just big tractor for its day, isn't it? Uh, it is big, yes. But it did the job, and it, uh, it's very reliable, is this very one, original. Is this one going as well? This one's not going, this is my tractor. Well, that's right, it's just, just, just stored here. <laughs> <laughs> they're all immaculately polished so that they're a bit slicker. Yeah, they are, I mean, probably the highlight of a lot of the Fords is the fact that the engines have all had modifications. Yeah. Really big modifications. In fact, we'll go over and have a look at some of the Ford engines and the turbos. Yeah. What did you say, this is a, a, a tra an engine out of a cargo? I think this is an engine out of a cargo, Ford cargo. Look at the bulge in the bonnet. The bulge in the bonnet to get the turbo out. Fuel pump is huge. It is huge. You can see where it's been stretched, so that, that bit's been added in. That's right. To make the bonnet longer, and there's obviously the chassis longer and the wheelbase, just to fit that really huge engine. I believe it's pushing out somewhere around 300 to 350 horsepower. <laughs> Does he track to pull with it then? Not with this one, he does do tractor pulling, that's why he's so clever at putting pumps on. <laughs> it does look like, if you painted it blue, it'd look factory. Yeah. So this is another modified Ford with the biggest turbo you've ever seen. It's actually bigger than Olivia, nearly. Yeah. What engine will that be, the Perkins then? That's a Perkins six cylinder. And again, it's been boosted. And that's where he's put this power steering pump there, he's made a bracket. Just put the power steering pump on. This is another one with the bonnet extended, but you can't even see. It's so good a job. Is that here? No, I think it's the other end. So Dave's just been showing me these stickers on here. Anyone that can read Spanish will know. That's French. French. Uh, this tractor and another one came with me, another two in fact, came with me in 2011 to France and Spain and back over the Pyrenees and back up to Portsmouth and then drove home. We did a similar journey in 2003 where we went right down to Benidorm. Yeah. Uh, and that took three and a half weeks and three and a half thousand miles. <coughs> uh, fantastic trip. Brilliant place to go touring, uh, but just quite interesting really. Still got the same tractor, still doing the same run. The paintwork's never been touched. Did you go on the tunnel or did you go on the ferry? Went on the ferry from Portsmouth to San Marlo and then all the way down France, about 750 miles, over the Pyrenees, another 700 down Spain the first time to Benidorm. Stayed there a couple of days and then came back by a different route, uh, back up France, and returned. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's why you need all this luggage room, isn't it? That's why we've got boxes on the back. Yeah. 
995. What year is this, did you say? Eight, eight, 70, 73. Biggest wheels you can get to make it go faster as well. Yeah, but there's a problem with getting on and off. Yeah, the step's not so clever, is it? Yeah. You're gonna fit all your luggage in that, are you? <laughs> is that it? We take the trail as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a bit of a design feature of the David Browns. You, you, you can't get on and off them very easily without tripping and banging your knee on the gear stick on the way on. I mean, I could try. So that was the tractors all ready the night before. We'll see them all going past later on in the programme. Let's go see how Stephen's got on at the Scorton Steam Rally. Uh, hello, I'm Sammy Brown and I'm here today with my Kerry Hill sheep. Uh, Kerry Hill sheep, right, so tell us what's so special about these sheep and what you love about them. Um, I really like the markings, um, they're very striking, um, uh, which makes them stand out, I think, and I think they're very beautiful. Um, and they are really good sheep, they're good mothers, um, they lamb easily, um, good milk, so yeah. And how many sheep have you brought today? Um, we're showing seven, uh, but we've brought more than that, um, so that then we've got mums and lambs with them as well. Which do you think, what's your, what's your prize, which one's going to bring home the prize, the Rolls Rosettes, do you think? Um, I think maybe one of the top Well, thank you, Sammy. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thanks for appearing on the Real Country Farm. Well, we've caught up with uh, Sammy's mum, Yvonne, yeah, and, and these really rather striking sheep, Yvonne. Uh, you must be really proud of Sammy showing, uh, well, keeping the family tradition of showing these lovely sheep. Yeah, I am. She's doing really, really well. Um, we were actually out last weekend at a Young Handlers event and she did the whole stuff herself. She did all the showing. Um, she did really well. And yeah, she's, she's preparing them as well when she's back from uni. So yeah, it's really, really good. It means I get an easy life. I just get them ready for her a bit, send them, make sure she's in the ring on time and she does all the rest. I might have to go in the ring with one today because she's got two ended in one class, so I might have a bit of work to do. But other you than that, you're not getting off the hook that easy. I know, then. no, it's not a rest, but um, she'll manage. It, what does it mean to you going to these yeah. agricultural shows and showing your sheep and the fact that they're all back now? It's really, really good. I've missed them. Um, it's nice to get your sheep and get them shown out in, in public. And, get the public to see them different breeds of sheep and it's nice to catch up with people that I see at the shows yourself included but other people as well that I've not seen now for a couple of years it's really nice to be back well, it's always nice to see you too Yvonne and enjoy the sunshine no rain I know. The great show, so far bonus. touch wood <laughs> lovely sheep too thank you well as farm diversifications go these two gentlemen have got it uh, have got it off to a tee craig and daniel whittingham how are you doing chaps are you well yeah good thank you very good thank so you tell, yeah. tell us where we are in the world uh we're on scorton showground just north of garstang and it's the weekend of our uh, scorton steam fair so so you are farmers that run events is that correct that's right yeah yeah, yeah. The day job is uh, agricultural contracting, which Daniel runs from from the, from the field here, and we just sort of, we run two events a year, which is the steam fair this weekend and the a game fair in September. So, so you're you're big on the contracting. Is that all your yeah. umbilicals? I've seen up where you. Yeah, you? that's all what we do on a daily basis. We also um, do a lot of second-hand machinery sales as well that me and my dad do as well. So, but this is the yard where we do everything from. So this is our main base. So, and then there's something rather special behind you, isn't there? Yeah, as well? yeah. This is our traps puller that we run from here as well. Uh, get all over here. We this is a new one. It's only been out once. We just were in France two weeks ago. And so, this is what you you this is, yeah, drive or yeah, pilot? I drive this. Yeah. And, and how many horsepower have we got behind us here? Uh, Six thousand horsepower. So, so just just a, just a little bit then. Just a little bit, yeah. Well, we're, and and you're going to be doing that on the farm as well in years we're, to we're come. We're going to be, planned? yeah. Next year, hopefully, we're going to have a standalone tractor pull event. So yeah, just just behind you, Steve. There's a purpose-built uh, tractor pulling track. So we're hoping to have our own event uh, with tractor pulling next year. But we've got a bit of mini tractor pulling on this weekend as well. So, so what kind of things will I see at the if I come down to the Scorton Steam Show then? Well, you'll see a bit of everything because we've got about 500 vintage vehicles booked in, vintage vehicles, custom trucks. Uh, we've got a fairground. We've got, as I say, mini tractor pulling, food and crafts. Stunt team with motorbikes. We've got a motorbike stunt team in the main ring this afternoon. And and what made you, you know, go from, it's a bit of a leap, quite, you know, part of the pun about the motorbike team, but from 
agricultural contractors and, and buying and selling machinery to putting events on having a show field because when did you start? We first had our first steam fair in 2005. Um, my dad's always been interested in going round shows itself and he thought well we could do this we've got a perfect field here so we've really put the infrastructure in here with the hard roads permanent toilets and it's a great little uh, show field. So, so he, he liked the shows and thought I'll have me own. I'll we'll have a do exactly, yeah. yeah. So before 2005 there was no such thing as this this event no. Uh, how are we doing now then, post pandemic? How are the events uh, stacking up for you guys? Well, re really good. We've had loads of interest in this. It's looking to be a busy weekend this weekend. Uh, we had our first game fair after the pandemic in September of last year, and that was really, really busy with record attendance. So, yeah, it looks like we're bouncing back. So, if, things, if people are watching this today, this Sunday, or whenever, and thinking um, we'll get down to the Steam, uh, so, sorry, to the game fair, uh, when will that be this year in 2022? That's on the 10th and 11th of September. And uh, what's the one thing that they shouldn't miss if they come down to the uh, to the steam fair, gentlemen? Well, they want to be watching some of this compact tracks pulling we've got on here this weekend and hang around the main ring and catch the stunt team. I, I've, heard, I've heard the stunt act is going to be absolutely amazing, including setting themselves on fire, I'm told. And, right, OK, that, health and safety, I can, I can see that going down well. Get, top tip then, if anybody else is thinking farm diversification, they're thinking of putting an event on, apart from don't, what's the bit of advice? <laughs> what's the bit of advice that you give to people like uh, yeah, do it 50 miles from here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. No, well, it's, I don't know, you, you need a decent site, really, and you need a good team behind you, because we've got, we've got loads of really good helpers. We couldn't do it without them. You just need a good team and a bit of common sense. And, and in terms of numbers of people, how many people will you expect over the weekend? I, I would hope for somewhere between six and 8,000 people over the weekend. That's a good weekend. Well, listen, uh, we better go. I think they've come to pick you up and take you for a uh, for a tour around the ground. Thank you very much, yeah, thank gentlemen. You. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. I'm on a farm in Shropshire. I'm surrounded by hundreds of people in the farmyard in front of me, and we're all here at the Down to Earth event. So I'm here with Matt from RABDF, who's been in charge of organising today's event. So Matt, just give us a, a brief overview. What is today all about? Yeah, thanks Angela, and thanks for coming along and, and covering it. Um, today's all about regenerative farming, um, uh, regenerative strategies that people can learn and take back to their own farm and um, see what the benefits are. The event's been a great day. I think we've had something like 1,300 to 1,400 people come through. Um, really good uh, topics, debates, speakers. Um, so yeah, really positive. Hello, my name's Tim Downs, farming in Shropshire, the farm at Longnor, organic producer for Omsco. We're milking uh, 300 uh, cows uh, here and 250 on another farm um, about 18 miles north. So we're a spring block calving unit and we're here talking about agroforestry. Brilliant. So this is obviously your farm. You've picked a fantastic day for this event. Uh, so overall, what is it that you're hoping to achieve for today? Probably no sunburn is uh, my main aim. I'll get back in the market <laughs> shortly. So the main aim would be to uh, encourage others to look at regenerative farming and for ourselves to pick up some uh, um, new knowledge about the uh, technology and how it relates to livestock producers because there's an awful lot of regenerative uh, events for arable farmers but I think yeah. the livestock farmers uh, need to uh, get on that same journey and learn and uh, um, maybe make a bit more profit in the same time as well. I'm here now with Andrew from Agriton who's going to give us a brief explanation of what Bokashi is. So Bokashi is quite simply the fermentation of organic matter. So on this farm in particular, I think they, they put a spray on the bedding, is that right? How, how does that work? How yeah, so Tim's applying the microorganisms onto the bedding every time he uses his straw chopper. So the straw chopper starts up, the microbes are sprayed onto the straws, it's going through the chopper, and those microbes then work their way into the animal bedding. They prevent the ammonia smells that we get from the sheds, they also improve the disease resistance or, or reduce sorry the disease pressure that's going on within that shed um, and they start fermenting the organic matter starts that process a little bit earlier and then as soon as he takes the muck out of the shed he puts it into a heat and puts a plastic sided sheet over the top of it to continue the fermentation process that requires an anaerobic environment and then when he's ready to spread the muck he just puts it in the normal spreader does he as usual 
Yeah, nothing's different. Yeah. So when he comes to use it, then he opens up that heap. He applies it then into a dung spreader or whatever means of, of spreading it he has and apply it onto the fields. It can either go onto the soil or into the soil, it doesn't matter which. The nutrients will be taken in regardless. So the ultimate end goal, in, I believe, is it's just to use less fertiliser, is it? Or exactly that. So if you as a farmer can keep hold of more nutrients that are already on your farm, you need to buy in less to achieve the same sorts of yield uh, and level of performance. Right, so one of the guests at today's event is a, a massive farming celebrity. Just introduce yourself, please. I'm Gareth Wynne Jones. I'm a hill farmer from Llanfairdechan in North Wales. And I'm down here, down to earth, doing a little bit of social media work and uh, living the dream. And is there anything in particular that you've seen today that you think you might be able to implement on your farm? I have seen so much stuff here. I've got to say, you know, it's been an inspirational day. There's so many great speakers here. And um, I'm going to take a lot of this information home and share it with a lot of our family and friends up in North Wales. And I think this is going to be a big success in the future, going around, you know, educating us and teaching people about food production, sustainability, regenerative agriculture, environmentally friendly, ticking all the boxes and feeding our nation affordably. Hello, my name is Rebecca Firth and I work for Healthy Soils at Hutchinson's. We can look at soil biology using our soil life monitor um, analysis, which um, we're the only people in the, uh, in the UK to offer this. Um, we also offer sap testing, tissue analysis. So we, we look at your soil, we start with the soil, um, we see what structure is like, see how that might be impacting your chemical analysis. We link all of that in together, give you um, practical recommendations on farm to help you make real life management changes. And we then link that into the growing crop and how that might help with your livestock enterprise um, or arable enterprise, whatever that may be. And we advise you on the, the nutrients and the fer fertilizers that may be required or, the, um, or whatever else you may need to help that crop grow in the most efficient, efficient way possible. We're all about making practical management advice um, to improve your farm profitability. So I'm here with Andrew. So, whereabouts have you come from today, Andrew? Uh, we've come from Lampeter and Ceredigion in West Wales. We used to have two and a half, mile, two and a half hours to come here. So. And what kind of farming do you do? Uh, main enterprise is dairy. We have a bit of beef and a small flock of sheep as well, but the uh, main enterprise is the dairy. So. And was there anything in particular that you were hoping to learn about today? Um, well, there's a lot of things we, we've got to adapt and change in our farms, the way the future is going. Um, it's no doubt we've got to be more profitable in what we've got at home and uh, try and get more out of what, we've, what we produce at home, really, uh, to be more efficient, uh, especially the way things are going with the carbon footprint and everything. So we, we've got to get our act together, I think, uh, as farming. Yeah. And is there anything that you've seen today that you think you'd be able to implement fairly easily on your farm? Yeah, we saw um, uh, the mixed uh, sword species with the herbal lace and uh, we've seen the um, direct drilling, uh, which is uh, the way things are going to avoid ploughing, I think. We're being transported around the farm on a tractor and trailer, which is uh, much relief on this hot day because it's, uh, it's a fair old way to walk around, but really interesting information stations and in different parts of the farm talking about um, increasing the size of your farm without buying any extra land. So everyone in the audience up here is pricked up. How do you do that? Well, you want to um, add in a different plane uh, of, um, of growth habits, so trees, bushes, and uh, access a different um, solar energy. We thought we'd end up with um, about a trailer load of uh, willow branches to uh, feed back to the cows. We ended up with six dray straw trailers full of willow as high as this ceiling to try and uh, um, store. So we put pallets on the trailers to uh, enable the airflow and it kept from October right the way through until, uh, until March. And we were chipping them and feeding them back to the cows during the winter time. So I'm here with Rory from NRM, whose company focuses on a very interesting way of testing soil. So just tell us a bit more about what you actually do. No problem. So we, we, uh, we offer a service to, to farmers in the livestock and the uh, arable sector. 
to send us soil samples, send us plant tissue samples, send us slurry samples, and we test them for, for nutrients, for organic matter, for organic carbon, enabling the farmers to make more informed decisions about their soil management and their kind of uh, their production um, decisions. Hi, my name is Helen Dent, and I'm director at Carbon Metrics. We're an independent consultancy firm um, based in the northwest of the UK, but providing services right across the UK for farmers just to help them come to grips with understanding what carbon means in agriculture and what the carbon looks like on their farm. Um, starting your carbon journey is really important, getting to know where you are now. Um, even though there's a wide range of different calculators out there um, and you can't at the moment compare between them because they'll give such varied results. If you have one and stick to one, you can understand what's happening on your farm where are the inefficient areas, where are the efficient areas and what you can do about it. And the other thing is to really start to look at what your soil organic matters are um, because if we want to show the benefits of our grassland and pastures we really have to now start showing that what we're doing with them and if we're improving the levels within them. So starting the journey is really important. One of the guest speakers at today's event explained that soil is a finite resource and that everything that we eat, actually apart from fish, uh, comes from soil either directly or indirectly through ruminants and animals that we eat that eat the grass. So hopefully events like these can make sure that we make best use of our land and, and soil and hopefully that's going to be good for all of us. That's about it for this week. I've had zero mils of rain this week. We've got a lot of hay made. Have you got any hay made? What have people been up to this week? Let us know in the comments. The tractors are all on the way, so I think that should be the end of the program. So here they all are. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. And uh, just imagine the smell of them, actually. They smell gorgeous. Good luck. Oh. Smells lovely. Quality hat. That's the one with like a 300 horsepower engine. Same as that one.